Hey, everybody. Did you think that we weren't going to make it tonight? <laughs> we were having some, what they call, technical difficulties, and we couldn't get a hold of you during that time. We were having a hard time getting the Wi-Fi signal. So all of a sudden, uh, we are cramming to get things up and running. So thank you for your patience and kindness here. Welcome to this edition of Song and Scripture. I'm glad to have you here with me tonight. Otherwise, I would be lonesome and by myself, and I prefer to have you here with me. So, with that being said, let's open with a word of prayer, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this time that we have to spend together, O oh Lord, and to search the Scriptures, Heavenly Father, and to apply them to our lives. And Lord, to make us more like you. Father, we just pray that you would um, meet the needs of those who are uh, here and watching the program today. I pray that you would meet their needs, Lord Jesus. I pray that you would lift their countenance. I pray that the joy of the Lord would be their strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hey, um, Thank you for being here once again with me. I want to sing a song to you tonight uh, with you. If I know there's some of you that like to play along or sing along, and I'm glad to hear that. That's uh, that encourages me actually. Um, but it's a song called "Lord, I Give You My Heart." It's in the key of G, and um, it's uh, just a simple, honest, heartfelt prayer. Is is all that it is. And um, I hope that you enjoy it. I hope that I'm pretty sure that you'll be um, somewhat familiar with it. It's been around for a little while, so. All right. This is my desire.
have your way in me, Lord. That's easy to say, but harder to do. Amen. Easy to say, but harder to do, right? Because you're giving up in a sense. You're giving up your rights. You're giving up your agenda to take up the Lord's agenda. You're giving up your desires to accomplish his desires. And the things that are important to him now become important to you. And so, Lord, I give you my heart. It's like, have your way, Lord. And just as it says, have your way in me. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone every breath that I take. Every moment I'm awake, Lord, have your way in me. And I think that that is a true and honest prayer for a believer that is seeking God and desiring his will in their lives. Amen. Let's pray. Uh, Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you would open these scriptures to us, that you would help us to understand. We lay aside our, um, our desires, our, our worries, our fears right now, and we just pray that you would help us to understand your word and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I <clears throat> watch TV, as I listen to the radio, as I see the news, although I have completely stopped watching the news, completely stopped watching the news. And some of you would say, well, how are you going to stay up with the latest things? Trust me, it gets to you. It gets to you. And um, I, I can read and things like that. But when I'm watching the television, it does something to me and it upsets me and it sickens my stomach literally to the point to where I'm all nervous and, and uptight. And so I have had to um, stop watching the, uh, the news and the like. And I'll tell you what, it has made a huge difference in, uh, in my peace of mind. So I throw that out there. I'm not telling you um, that you should do the same thing. But at least you should think about it. Um, and uh, if maybe you find the same thing that I do, that it's, uh, it makes you uptight a little bit and stuff like that. So, um, But as I watch TV, as I hear the news, as I'm reading the paper, um, seeing things on the Internet, I see a lot of um, lying. Doesn't that sound odd? I see a lot of lying. Well, you can't, are you saying that you can't trust what you hear on the internet? I'm saying that that could be a possibility, yeah. And I'm saying that you need to check a number of sources before um, maybe basing your opinion on it. Uh, when I was in college, our professors would make us um, choose at least so many sources. So you had to have like at least six sources uh, where you're getting your information from and where you're quoting things for your papers and different stuff like that, you know. And, and uh, Wikipedia, <laughs> which is, you know, the biggest and quickest one to get to on the internet, honestly, um, was one of the least trustworthy um sources that we could rely upon and so we were able to use wikipedia as one source but we had to use other sources as well and wikipedia had a very very broad um uh, view of things um and uh and so when you would find um what you thought you understood from wikipedia you check your other sources and you're like well wait a minute that's not what wikipedia said <laughs> right and so it would help to balance and round out honestly round out your opinion all right and uh i'm not saying that wikipedia is bad because it, it is helpful there's no doubt but when um you are considering basing your opinion and various things like that you really do need to check other sources and um, let's face it, with news sources, 
um, it is really difficult to find out who is telling the truth, okay? And even Christian sources, listen to me now, even Christian sources have a bias. Christian sources have a bias, all right? And when we're looking to formulate our opinion, to educate ourselves, we're not looking for a bias. We're looking for honest objectivity. And that's the way news used to be, but it is not that way anymore. And it's hard to find uh, any news source that is like that. All right, And you could say, well, this source here is, is non-biased. It's more objective. And it may be more objective, but it's biased. I, I can promise you that. So anyways, all this to say that when we are basing our opinion, when we're trying to educate ourselves on, on various topics and things like that, it's important that we seek truth, right? If we're not seeking truth, what is the point? <laughs> what is the point? All right. I remember I was talking to uh, a, a Chinese lady and she was, uh, she asked me, so we were in the hospital. Uh, I, th I think I was having some tests done. This was years ago now, but uh, she asked me, you know, what do I do for a living? So I told her I'm a pastor. And, um, and so that uh, obviously opened up some conversations. You know, she wanted to know what I do and, and what religion am I and things like that. So I told her and, you know, the things that I do. And I told her that, um, you know, that um, I help people with their relationship with God. And, um, you know, I teach them the Bible and um, teach them how to love God and to live for God and that kind of thing. You can, you may be able to hear our youth groups outside of my, uh, uh, my office out here during the summer months, they're outside playing around and, uh, we just love to hear them running and, and laughing and having so much fun. So you may hear a squeal every now and then. So, but this lady, um, so she, she looked at me, uh, as if I was from Mars, and, and she was just shaking her head. She says, um, I, our religion is not like that. So I asked her a little bit about it, you know, and um, she was um, like Buddhist or something like that. I, I forget now exactly what it was, but she said, we, we don't have that. And I said, you don't have what? And she says, well, we, we don't have a church per se that we go to. We have you know, we were, we um, perform certain acts. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? What do you do? Well, we have to say this prayer um, and to make our God pleased with us. And so I said, so what is your, um, so, uh, so what is the relationship like with you and your God? And she said, we have no relationship. There is no relationship. And I said, oh, okay, I understand. And I said, well, and with us, it's... And I wasn't telling her that mine is better than yours because that's not the way I want to come across, right? I wanted to show her um, the importance of seeking truth. And, and so I told her, I said, well, my relationship with my Lord and Savior is that of love. And I said, and I love him because he first loved me, as the scriptures say, you know. And that seemed to puzzle her as well. She didn't understand that he first loved me. I said, well, he loved me in that he, he gave himself, he sacrificed himself to um, restore and repair the relationship between me and him that was severed because of my disobedience, my sin. And so she began to understand things. And, um, and I said to her, I said, you know, uh, so we got to talk in a little bit longer, you know, and, um, and so both of us got called to go into our appointments and things like that. And, and so she was saying goodbye. And I said, you know what, um, I'm going to, pray for you. And she says, thank you. And um, I'm going to pray. If it's all right with you, I'm going to pray that you find the truth. 
And she said, okay. I kind of questioned like, the, okay. <laughs> and I said, because if the search is not about truth, what's the point? And I left her with that, you know. And I don't, I've never seen her again. I don't know where, you know, her life has gone. But I pray that she saw love in my heart and that of my God as well for her. And that there can be and should be a relationship between us and God. Amen. And so um, in the world that we are living there is a, an absence of truth. There is a lack of truth. And um, we are, uh, if we are not seeking out truth, then we are just accepting people's opinions. We are accepting people's bias. We are accepting uh, lies. And there's a lot of it out there. Okay. And so it is extremely, extremely important for us to be seeking that which is truth, all right? And I don't mean truth the opposite of lies, per se, all right? That's not all I mean. I mean, that is part of what I'm saying, all right? But what is truth? You know, Pilate asked Jesus, what is truth? You know, Jesus said, I come here to testify of the truth. This is when Jesus was before Pilate. You know, and and he, he says, uh, um, what is truth? You know, and Jesus came to testify of the truth. Well, what is the truth that Jesus came to testify about? Well, he came to testify about God the Father. He came to testify about himself and both of them and the Holy Spirit, the three of them represent Biblical truth, all right? They are what the Bible is based upon, all right? And our lives should also um, be based upon truth, all right? If you think about the, uh, the man that built his house upon uh, the rock, all right? He had a firm foundation, right? And, but the man that built his house upon the sand, and you've heard this story, this parable in the Bible, the man that built his house upon the sand, well, when the wind comes up, it blows the waves, and the waves kick up, right? And the rain come down, and, and, and the, the water washes against this house that is built upon the sand, and the sand shifts when the water goes back out, all right? And that shifting sand causes anything that is not built on a strong and firm foundation, it causes it to crumble. Why? Because there is no foundation. All right? But if what we live our lives and what we build our lives upon is truth, and our truth, that truth is a firm foundation to us, and that foundation is referring to Jesus Christ. He is the solid rock. He is our firm foundation on which we can build anything else, okay? We can build ministry. We can um, build, uh, you know, other things, churches. We can build our own personal family lives upon if we have a strong foundation. If we're not on the firm foundation of Christ Jesus the Lord, we are vulnerable to anything, all right? And what I mean is, take your marriage, for instance. Do you know that even, so that more than 50% of marriages, pushing 60% of marriages now, fail? Do you know that? They end up in divorce. And there is no difference between those that don't know Jesus and those that do know Jesus in statistics about marriage. That's, that's kind of scary, isn't it? Right? That um, even you would think, well, because I'm a Christian, my marriage is kind of immune to, to what's out there. And, and it's just not. We hear it all the time that um, Christians and non-Christians alike are, are getting a divorce. And it's sad. It, 
it's sad. It tears families apart and it breaks your heart, you know. And um, but when when we do not build our lives, our marriages, our our finances upon the foundation of Christ Jesus the Lord, then we are, are vulnerable to the outside influences. Our marriages are vulnerable to outside influences. Our churches, think about it, our churches are vulnerable to outside influences. And so I challenge you today, I was hoping to get to a little bit more scripture today, but um, Jesus in John chapter 14, verse 6, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All right, that's John 14, 6. And I'll read another one for you today. Um, in John 17, 17, it says, your word is truth. Your word, O oh Lord, is truth. I challenge you today to seek out the truth. All right? Seek out the truth. Um, base and build your life upon that which is a firm and a strong foundation so that when the outside influences of the world, drugs, sex, money, and the like, come against you and try to lure you away, the things that are important to you are built upon a firm foundation. Amen? Well, I pray that this uh, study was um, encouraging to you and beneficial to you. I want to pray for you today. Uh, do we have any prayer requests, Dylan? All right, we're going to uh, pray for healing for Matt and for Mason. Um, and we're going to pray also for our... Um, law enforcement, our first responders and the like, okay? And so let's, uh, let's pray together right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. Lord, our world is so in need of you. We need your truth in our lives. And Father, today, we seek your truth, Heavenly Father. We seek your will, as the song was saying today, have your will, Lord, in my life. Father, I pray for uh, Matt today. I pray for healing for Matt, Lord. And, and um, Father, whatever the case may be, uh, we know that it's important to him and those that love him. And so, Father, we pray for Matt today. We lift him up to you. We pray for your healing hand upon him. And Lord, by your stripes, it says in your word, by your stripes, we are healed. And Lord, we just pray that you would heal Matt. We pray for Mason today, too, that you would heal him as well, whatever the case may be with, with him, and you know what's going on with him. Father, we pray for our first responders, Lord, um, that is near and dear to my heart. We pray for our firefighters, Lord, and those that are full-time and those that are volunteer as well. Both are very, very important, and we lift them up to you. And Father, we pray for our law enforcement. We pray for um, our soldiers, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord, for those that are in the medical field. Um, and all of these are on the front lines. And Father, I just want to pray also for the pastors, um, Heavenly Father. I pray for my brothers and sisters in PACT. Um, and for those that don't know, it stands for Pastors aligned for community transformation. I pray for all of the packed pastors. I pray for those uh, that are in uh, LifeNet, Apostolic Network as well, and, and those that are truly on the front lines um, in making sure that they are preaching the full and pure gospel of Christ Jesus the Lord. And uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, for these things. Uh, we pray, Heavenly Father, also for our government, Lord, and, and we pray that, Father, you would guide our government, Lord, and though it seems as though it might be out of control, Heavenly Father, or that um, uh, we're just very concerned, oh God, for our company, we pray, or our country, we pray that you would 
Lead and guide and protect our country, Lord. And today and right now, we recognize your hand upon the United States of America. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love you. Thank you for being with me today. God bless you. Thank you for watching um, Song and Scripture. I'll see you next time. Later. <laughs>